A recent study suggests the universe is similar to your brain, only at a much, much larger scale. The brain's neural network contains about 86 billion neurons. The observable universe has at least 100 billion galaxies. Both galaxies and neurons have a similar structure. It's a complex web of nodes linking up long thread-like fibers. But in each of these systems, the fibers make up a mere 30% of the total mass, and the remaining 70% are either water in the brain or dark energy in the universe. The ways that galaxies and webs of neurons connect with one another are surprisingly similar. In both cases, the process follows the same physical principles. At the same time, some researchers claim the resemblance between the brain and the universe is only superficial. Your mind perceives tiny details and joins them, and then it comes up with a conclusion that has nothing in common with reality, like the brain is a mini-universe. In billions of years, the universe is likely to expand so much that we won't be able to see any stars in the sky. To turn Earth into a black hole, you'd have to squeeze it until it was the size of a marble. And if you wanted the sun to become a black hole, you'd have to compress it until it's no more than four miles across. A starburst galaxy is a galaxy that's forming tons of new stars at breakneck speed. It usually happens after two galaxies merge into one. While Earth has only one natural satellite, Jupiter is surrounded by at least 79 moons. In the universe, there are not only dwarf planets, but also dwarf galaxies. They have from 1,000 to a few billion stars. For comparison, the Milky Way galaxy is made up of 250 to 400 billion stars. A supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from Earth hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's one quadrillion which is one with 15 zeros, times deeper than what the human ear can hear. Planet Kelt 9 b is 670 light years away from Earth. It's an ultra-hot Jupiter. Those are giant, scorching hot planets with a mass similar to that of Jupiter. On Kelt 9 b the heat is so great on the day side of the planet, it tears molecules apart. Any liquid floating in outer space forms itself into a sphere. It also happens in low Earth orbit. Our home Milky Way galaxy is more than 105,000 light years across. All the planets of the solar system would fit between Earth and the Moon with some space to spare. Black holes spaghettify things. It happens when something gets past the point of no return. Then the black hole's gravitational pull starts to stretch this object in one direction and squeeze in another. The first celestial body that astronomers identified as a spiral was the Whirlpool Galaxy. Its long arms are made of gas and stars, and everything is sprinkled with fine space dust. When you're on Earth, you can only see 5% of the universe. A star coming too close to a black hole can be torn apart by its gravitational force. WASP-12b is a giant planet 1,400 light years away from Earth. It's made up mostly of gas. Unfortunately, the planet is doomed. It orbits too close to its parent star. In about 10 million years, WASP-12b will be swallowed by its greedy sun. Our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, its closest neighbor, are going to meet in a bit less than 4 billion years. When they collide, they'll form one huge elliptical galaxy. One of Saturn's smaller moons, Enceladus, reflects almost 90% of the Sun's light. It makes the moon one of the brightest objects in the solar system. But since it reflects sunlight instead of absorbing it, the temperatures on Enceladus's icy surface drop to negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest mountain in the solar system is Olympus Mons on Mars. It's three times as high as Mount Everest. 
If you were standing on top of Olympus Mons, its slopes would be hidden by the planet's curvature. In our solar system, Mercury and Venus are the only two planets without moons. Scientists who are planning to send droids to Mars want to load the machines with lots of heavy equipment. The droids will also be built from stronger materials, all because of the relatively low gravity on the red planet. Everything on Mars is almost three times lighter than on Earth. Pluto's largest moon is half the size of the dwarf planet itself. This makes Charon, that's the moon's name, the largest known satellite relative to its parent size. There are three golf balls on the moon. They were launched during the Apollo 14 mission. Mathematicians claim white holes might exist, even though scientists haven't found one yet. If you came across a white hole, you wouldn't be able to enter it from the outside. But you'd see light and matter escaping from within. On our planet, one full rotation takes one day. But the sun is so enormous that it needs 25 to 35 Earth days to make one rotation. The moon is not a perfect sphere. It's shaped more like an egg because of the Earth's gravity. Spacesuits protect astronauts from huge temperature differences during spacewalks, from negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 250 degrees Fahrenheit. A neutron star gets born after a supernova collapses. After birth, it rotates extremely fast, about 60 times per second. But this rate can sometimes grow up to 600 times per second. In 2007, astronomers started to receive ultra-bright and ultra-strong radio signals. Named fast radio bursts, they were coming from somewhere billions of light years away. When astronauts are in space, they often see random flashes of light. They occur when cosmic rays hit the optic nerve in the eye. If you traveled around Pluto's equator, it would be the same distance as walking from Rome to New York City. If you visited GJ504b, a planet located a mere 57 light years away from Earth, you'd see that the planet is glowing. It's because of the heat left after its formation. The planet's color is a dull magenta, like a dark cherry blossom. Jupiter has the shortest day of all the planets in the solar system. It lasts just 9 hours and 55 minutes. Because of its fast rotation, Jupiter isn't a perfect sphere. It's a bit flattened. Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. There are at least 1,600 of them on the planet's surface, but most of them are extinct. Mercury has wrinkles. When its iron core was cooling, the planet's crust contracted. It made the surface of the planet uneven. Nuclear pasta found inside neutron stars is believed to be the strongest substance in the universe. These noodles of neutrons can be 10 billion times stronger than steel. Some astronomers believe black holes might have no event horizon, aka the point of no return. Instead, there might be the apparent horizon. It can only trap stuff for some time. Later, matter or energy escapes, but in a different form. Each Apollo mission needed 15 spacesuits. Each member of the three-person main crew needed three suits. One was for training, the second for flight, and there was also a backup suit, in case something went wrong with the flight suit. And each of the three members of the backup crew had two spacesuits, one for training and one for flight. Scientists believe Mercury might still have a partially molten core. It could explain why the planet has a magnetic field, even if it's just 1% as strong as Earth's. Dust storms on Mars are the most severe in the whole solar system. They can be raging for months on end. On planet Kepler-16b, which is 245 light years away from Earth, not one, but two suns set over the horizon. The planet is as massive as our Saturn, but has a higher density. It takes 45 minutes to put on a spacesuit. After it's done, 
an astronaut needs another hour to adapt to new conditions. Earth grazing fireballs are bright meteors that enter the Earth's atmosphere but then leave it again. Triton, one of Neptune's moons, orbits the planet backward. It's the only big moon of any known planet to do so. Triton is also gradually getting closer to Neptune. Experts think that, eventually, the moon will be pulled apart by Neptune's gravity, and then it'll form a ring around the gas giant. Dwarf planet Haumea, which is further from Earth than Neptune, is truly bizarre. It's orbiting in the Kuiper Belt, a donut-shaped ring of ice objects circling the Sun. Haumea has two moons, a weirdly elongated shape, and a day that lasts four Earth hours. But the coolest thing, the dwarf planet is surrounded by incredibly thin rings. They're likely the result of an ancient collision. It takes Neptune almost 165 Earth years to make one full orbit around the Sun. In other words, since the gas giant was discovered in 1846, it's only circled the Sun once. Weird, unusual sounds out of nowhere are spreading all over our galaxy, constantly repeating, and it's something we've never heard before. Scientists discovered it in 2020, and it was nothing like any of the other energy signatures they ever studied. Powerful and bright radio signals occurring from time to time, mysteriously disappearing within a day. It doesn't fit the profile of any space body we know. The signal is a bit irritating, and it disappears without a schedule. When scientists tried to match the signal with some other telescopes, it was gone. Low-mass stars sometimes flare up with radio energy, but not here, since they mostly have X-ray counterparts. Very dense collapsed stars, like pulsars and magnetars, are also not a choice. The closest solution they got is a mysterious class of objects we know as the Galactic Center Radio Source, GCRT. It's a radio source that brightens and rapidly glows. It decays near the center of our galaxy and could help us unravel the mysteries of the universe. If you had a flying car that could go up at a speed of 60 miles per hour, you'd only need one hour to get into space. The moon is a little bit farther. 250,000 miles, which is about 10 times the circumference of our planet. That means a moon trip would be like taking a tour around the globe and doing it 10 times straight, which would take less than 6 months. A trip to Pluto would take over 800 years. Proxima b is the closest Earth-like neighbor we have. It's a small rocky world that orbits the closest stellar neighbor of our Sun. It orbits the star's habitable zone an area that's far enough from any star to have moderate conditions, not too cold and not too hot for liquid water to at least hypothetically exist. If you tried to travel to Proxima b at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour, which is the speed of the Apollo moon rockets, it would take you over 112,000 years to get there. You might not be able to breathe there. No one knows if Proxima b has an atmosphere. Humans explore the universe all the time, but we can only see around 5% of the matter up there. And Albert Einstein was the first one that realized the empty space is not really nothing. The rest we can't see is actually made up of invisible matter, also known as dark matter. It's about 27%. Combined with something called dark energy, which is 68%. If you try to pour water into space, of course, outside of a spacecraft, it would immediately boil away or vaporize. That's because there's no air or air pressure in space. As air pressure lowers, the temperature you'd usually need to boil water at also gets lower. Keeping that in mind, water boils way faster on a mountaintop than, for example, at sea level. There's no air pressure in space, so water could boil at a very low temperature. Scientists believe that there are at least a couple of billion galaxies out there. We don't know the real number, and probably never will, but they tried to calculate it by counting how many galaxies we can see in a pretty small and restricted area of the sky. 
It may seem as if the universe was filled with stars and a couple of planets here and there, but our home galaxy has at least 100 billion planets. If you fill a balloon with helium and release it, you'll notice it floats very high. It'll go up into the atmosphere, but it won't go into outer space. The higher you go, the thinner the air in our atmosphere gets. Your balloon will rise up until the point where the atmosphere surrounding it has the same weight as the helium inside it. That will happen at approximately a height of 20 miles above the surface. So this is as far as a helium balloon can rise. We don't really know how big the universe is. We can't see its edges, nor do we know if it even has an edge. We use technology to see out to a distance of around 14 billion light years from our planet. This means we can see around 28 billion light years in diameter across, starting with the outermost layer of our atmosphere that ends at around 600 miles above our planet's surface. Although the size of the universe is constantly changing and gets bigger through time. Mercury is closest to the Sun, so most people think it's the hottest planet, too. Still, Venus is the hottest planet. It's the second planet away from our central star, around 30 million miles farther from the Sun compared to Mercury. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, which is like some sort of a warming blanket that helps maintain the heat coming from the Sun. Venus has an unexpectedly thick atmosphere around 100 times thicker than the one we have. Its atmosphere doesn't let the heat out. It just keeps it and constantly makes Venus hotter and hotter. Also, it mostly consists of carbon dioxide that freely lets solar energy in. But it's less transparent to lose long wavelength radiations that the warm heated surface emits. The average temperature there is around 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt tin. The maximum temperature on its neighbor, Mercury, is 800 degrees Fahrenheit. In maybe two or more billion years, it will be way too hot for life to exist on our precious planet. As the hundreds of millions of years go by, our sun will keep getting hotter and brighter. Eventually, temperatures will be so high, our beautiful oceans will be wiped away. Since they produce 70% of the oxygen we need to survive, there will be no life without them. All of this means that our planet will simply become a vast desert, something like Mars is today. Pluto, a very distant used-to-be planet, now dwarf planet, is actually smaller in diameter than the entire US. The biggest distance there, from Maine to Northern California, is approximately 2,900 miles, while Pluto is only 1,473 miles across. Pluto is very far, but the edge of our solar system is 1,000 times farther away than this dwarf planet. But astronomers found many space objects orbiting our Sun way farther than Pluto, such as Kuiper Belt objects and trans-Neptunian objects. There's also an Oort comet cloud that goes half a light year from Pluto, also 1,000 times farther. A neutron star is really heavy. Just a teaspoon filled with it would weigh 6 billion tons. Neutron stars are something that remain from huge stars that have run out of fuel. The fading star explodes, and its core falls apart. But, due to gravity, it forms an extremely dense neutron star. These stars typically have a mass of up to three suns. But the radius there is around six miles, because this is one of the densest things in our universe, at least that we know about. The universe has a color, and it averages to be some kind of beige or, as they call it, cosmic latte. It also has its own smell that reminds you of seared steak or hot metal. At least, that's something astronauts floating in space have said. If you want to build a spacesuit, get ready to work really hard. It takes 5,000 hours to make it and will cost you a million dollars. A really good one will have 11 layers of material and weighs about 110 pounds, and it needs to be comfortable. You'll need more space in there because you grow up to two inches when in space. When you're floating around in space, Earth's gravity doesn't have any impact on you. That's why the vertebrae in your spine might expand and relax a little bit, which means you'll be maybe 3% taller. For six feet, it's about two extra inches. Oh, don't worry, it's not permanent. As soon as you go down to Earth, you'll shrink back down to your normal size within a couple of months. 
space isn't the best option if you want to have a conversation with your friend. Because up there, sound doesn't travel at all. Molecules there are so far apart that sound vibrations can't reach them, which automatically means they can't vibrate, so we can't hear them. Movies are not accurate with this. No one could hear you screaming in space, too. We kind of live inside our sun. The sun is not just that big hot ball of light located 93 million miles away from us. Its outer atmosphere is way bigger. It extends far beyond the surface we can see. Our planet's orbit goes through its tenuous atmosphere. The evidence is when gusts of the solar wind generate the southern and northern lights. That means, in some way, we live inside the sun. Not just us, other planets too, including distant Neptune. The heliosphere, which is what we call the outer solar atmosphere, extends to about 10 billion miles. The Milky Way is one of the biggest mysteries out there, literally. It's hard to figure out how big our home galaxy is. And one of the main reasons is because we live in it. Think of it as walking around a mall. You can tell it's big, but you can't be certain until you actually see it from a bird's eye view. The Milky Way consists of billions of distant stars that look like a string of lights from afar. So you just need to measure the distance between these stars and voila, you have the answer. Eh, not really. I might have forgotten to mention opaque clouds of dust blocking your view. Some scientists were stubborn enough to run computer models of how galaxies form and evolve. There's a halo around our galaxy, so the scientists wanted to see if there was some sort of a dead end in the Milky Way. They found out that the Milky Way spreads for 100,000 light-years away from its center. It likely means that the entire galaxy is around 200,000 light-years across. The problem with this estimation is that halos don't tend to have some final border since they simply fade away. It's like pointing a flashlight and trying to see precisely where the light ends. In 2013, the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image of something 25 million light-years away. It turned out to be a spiral galaxy, later called ESO 3738, with at least seven other galactic neighbors. And this galaxy is as thin as a pancake. A very shiny pancake. The telescope also took a photo of another galaxy cluster 65 million light-years away. It was called IC 335. It's another glorious glittering pancake floating in the vastness of space. The images the telescope took aren't the most accurate. It's hard to tell what exactly you're looking at. These disk galaxies have lots of dust clouds that can stretch for hundreds of light years across. They're mainly located near the centers of galaxies and are invisible in regular light. But they can be detected with the help of a blue filter. Anyway, this IC335 galaxy is an oval disk with huge clouds of gas and dust. This means stars constantly appear there. But not all galaxies create stars. A galaxy is born as a giant ball of slowly rotating gas that is steadily collapsing in on itself. As it starts spinning faster and faster, the pancake shape is formed. Ooh, pass me the syrup. It's like spinning pizza dough in the air after rolling it into a ball. The topping is stars, and the sauce is clouds of dust and gas. Are you getting hungry like me? Some galaxies can lose their gas and dust if they become part of a galaxy cluster. Then all these mini-galaxies orbit their common center of mass, with gas separating them. When a disk galaxy dashes through them like a speeding train, the pressure can blow away this dust and gas. From far away, it looks like you're staring at a DVD you're about to play. But if you traveled millions of light years to get a closer look, you'd see a dim disk filled with stars. You wouldn't even be able to tell you're inside it. You'd also see a bright blob of dust left by the red giants in the middle of the galaxy. Red giants are massive and very bright stars with low surface temperatures. But the images of these galaxies don't actually show us their real color. Cameras make up some of these hues so that you don't have to look at something fuzzy or grainy. People don't actually know the real colors of distant galaxies. Our galaxy has a lot of gas inside, like me. So we don't need to expect our home to dry up anytime soon. In fact, the Milky Way still produces new stars around 7 a year. But some galaxies fade out when they can no longer create stars. In the industry, they call it strangulation. And it happens when galaxies run out of gas. Which means there's no more new material that can be used for star making. Gas and dust aren't the only things you can find in a galaxy. 
Just like a magician pulling a rabbit, flowers, or other things out of their magic hat, galaxies have other surprises, like planets, those balls of matter spinning around themselves and around other things. Well, technically, planets are far from being perfectly round in shape, but they aren't also flat like spiral galaxies. It's mostly because of gravity. Its force is so strong that a planet pulls everything towards its center, taking the shape of a sphere. In the process, all the edges and anything else that might stick out get smoothed out. But the smaller a space body is, the less round it is. Take a comet. It doesn't always have a smooth surface. It's small, and therefore, its edges are rugged and pointy. Given the size of Earth, it's safe to say the gravity is strong here compared to that of the Moon or any smaller-sized space object. And because of our planet's constant rotation, there's an outward bulge on Earth. This tug-of-war between the gravity pulling inward and the planet's spin doesn't allow Earth to be a perfect ball. On top of Earth not being a perfect sphere, the planet is also tilted. This design flaw is responsible for the seasons we have. This tilt could happen because millions of years after Earth was formed, it probably collided with a protoplanet, a large space body developing into a planet. Venus is unique because it rotates backward compared to the rest of its peers. If you were standing on Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system, you'd see the sun rise in the west and set in the east. But you'd have to make it on time to observe this phenomenon. A day on Venus lasts for more than 240 Earth days. For a long time, scientists believed that the sun's strong pull on Venus was responsible for such a long day. But new theory claims that Venus used to spin just like Earth and the rest of the planets. But at one point, it just flipped its axis 180 degrees. It doesn't mean the planet abruptly stopped halfway through the rotation and started to move backward. When theory suggests that a large comet or object struck the planet in the past, this might have caused it to change the direction of its rotation. But many scientists doubt this theory. If you observe the moon for some time, you may notice that it's the same face staring at you every night. The truth is that the moon does rotate, but very slowly. It takes our planet's natural satellite 27 Earth days to rotate around its axis. Plus, the moon rotates at the same rate that it orbits Earth. The side we always see is called the near side of the moon. And the side that's not facing us is, you guessed it, the far side of the moon. It also has the nickname the dark side of the moon. Uranus's rotation axis is 98 degrees relative to the plane of the solar system, which basically means that the planet spins on its side. For a while, scientists believed that a large object firing through space knocked into Uranus, causing it to tilt. But here's one problem. Uranus's moons are covered in ice. A collision so powerful that it made the planet tilt would have resulted in disrupting the moon's movement and their position. But they seem relatively untouched and all the ice covering them is still intact. But any major changes happening with Uranus would have generated enough energy to melt the ice. Another reason for Uranus's strange position might be its rings. Yup, Uranus has rings just like Saturn, except they're lighter and fainter. Saturn's rings are mostly billions of chunks of ice and rock floating in orbit. Some particles can be the size of a pebble, while others can reach the size of a house. Wow! Other particles are broken up comets, asteroids, and moons torn apart by Saturn's gravity. If you observe the rings from afar, they look like colorful stripes made up of thousands of different streaks, but there are actually only eight layers of rings. Uranus might have had rings that were just as glorious as Saturn's around 4.5 billion years ago. The balance between Saturn's gravity and its rings might be responsible for keeping the planet upright so that it doesn't tilt over. If Uranus had the same rings, they could prevent the planet from toppling over. The way to solve Uranus's tilting problem might be for the planet to get its rings back. They would help Uranus keep its balance. On the other hand, hey, we like it just the way it is.